And, and I'm going to go right to, I, I received many emails, I'm sure many of my colleagues did, <clears throat> throughout the weekend. And, and many people think that uh, this is something here that the city of Las Cruces in, either encouraged or asked for. And I, and I start right here. It says, first part, it says, all of us here on this dais took an oath to uphold the laws and the Constitution of the United States of America. Okay? So on the second one, it says, in 1980, a law was passed called the Refugee Act of 1979. It was passed by the Senate, 85 to 0. And in 1980, we had two senators in New Mexico, Senator Pete Domenici and Senator Harrison Schmidt. Senator Bingaman didn't come on until 1982. And then in the House, it passed 328 to 47. Uh, most likely, it was Congressman Joe Skeen in 1980. It was signed by President Carter on March 17, 1980. So it's a federal law. So we, the city of Las Cruces, we are required, we took an oath. We have to uphold the U.S. Uh, a federal law here. And in that, in that act, in 1980, it said, it, what did the Ref Refugee Act do? It raised the limitation of refugees from 17,400 to 50,000. It created the Office of the U.S. Coordinator of Refugee Affairs and the Office of the Refugee Resettlement. And the purpose is the act recognizes that this has been the historic policy of the United States to respond to the urgent needs of persons subject to persecution in their homelands and provide assistance, asylum, and resettlement opportunities to admitted refugees. Admitted refugees, when they're coming in, when they're being brought by a member of the Border Patrol or ICE, they're admitted. A lot of people say they're illegal. They're, they went in. They're, if they're being brought by them, they're admitted. What, number four, what does the Office of Refugee Resettlement Act say? The Office of the Ref, uh, Refugee Resettlement ORR is a program administration for children and families, an office within the United States Department of Health and Human Services, <clears throat> created with the passing of the United States Refugee Act of 1980. The ORR offers support for refugees seeking safe haven within the United States, including victims of human trafficking, those seeking asylum from persecution, survivors of torture and war, and unaccompanied alien children. The mission and purpose of the ORR is to assist in the relocation process and provide needed services to individuals granted asylum within the United States. Since 1975, the United States has assisted in the resettlement of more than 3 million refugees. Annual admissions of refugees in the United States since 1980 have ranged from 27,100 to as many as 200,116. On the next page it has here, what would happen if the city defied federal law? Well, the federal government has said that they would withhold the following, they could withhold the following programs. And I listed some of those that affect us. Alcohol, drug abuse, mental health services grants, child and adult care food program, community development block grants, conservation reserve program, federal Pell grants, supplemental nutrition assistance programs, Head Start, local law enforcement block grants, also called COPS grants, Section 8 housing choice vouchers, temporary assistance for uh, needy families, FFA fundings for our airports, and transit funding for our, tran for our transit system. I estimate it's anywhere between 25 to $50 million. So what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to say, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is this, this city, this, this management team is, is dealing with a situation, what I refer to as a federal unfunded mandate. So I'll give you an example. The state has an unfunded mandate, and that is uh, the county commission is, is required to house and, and provide uh, housing for district court judges. Those are state judges, they're not county judges. That's, an, that's a state unfunded mandate. This is a federal unfunded mandate. This federal law passed this law, and it, 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 we're going to deal with it. And the best way to do it, and I think a lot of it has to say that we have a, pretty, a very good relationship with our federal um, U.S. Border Patrol or ICE. They don't have to let us know when they're dropping them off. In some cities, they've just dropped them off all hours of the night. But they at least call uh, our uh, organization and give us a heads up so that we can make sure we have something here so that they're not just left on the street. So I just want to say this, because I know that unless you federal, follow federal law uh, very well, it's hard to know that this is a federal law, what we're doing. We're just doing what we have to. The second thing is, I received a call <clears throat> from someone who's very close to, to the administration over the weekend, and she said, listen, Ken, we recognize what you're doing, but this is a federal law. If you really want to make change, it's got to come from Congress and, and the Senate. 
because if they want to put a cap on the limit of number of refugees, that's the ones who can do it. We have to adhere to the federal law, just as I mentioned to you. We took an oath. We have to uphold that. Now, I got to thinking, and I clarified this. I, I asked, I don't know, um, Elizabeth, if you have access to the picture of Central America. So, um, you know, we don't think about this, but a lot of these refugees, these immigrants are coming from uh, Honduras and Guatemala. So I called the Consul General's office yesterday, and I said, I spoke to the Deputy Consul General, I said, don't you guys have borders? And he goes, yes, we do. So they have to actually ask for asylum before they make it up to the United States. He says, the only thing, Ken, he says, that Mexico does not have a, a cap on the number. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, this, this is something here that um, if we can work with Congress and our Senate to, to you know, at least try to limit this or be able to do it in, in, a, in a manner that it doesn't displace uh, migrants or displace our residents uh, from, uh, from their activities, just so that we can do this uh, in a humane way, in a prudent way, I think is the best way to approach it. I wanted to say these things so that you have an idea that we're doing the best we can with what we've been dealt with. And, and I'm, I'm proud of uh, City Manager Ian and his staff. And around the clock, they, they have meetings nonstop with Governor. And I want to take a moment to thank uh, Governor Luhan Grisham for her, her uh, commitment. She um, dedicated her resources, making sure that we have what we need. And um, I think it's been a great team. The county, uh, I see Chuck here as well. Chuck McMahon, the deputy uh, city ma county manager. And so it's, and Commissioner Reynolds? Oh, okay. Uh, is here as well, and so it's been a, a really a great team effort, and many of those uh, in the faith faith based uh, organizations uh, as well for everyone just coming together. So with that, now I'm going to turn it over to my colleagues and uh, Councillor Vasquez and Councillor Gondara. Uh, 